Hi, everybody. Welcome to Mindful at the Allo Studios. We have a super mega special guest today who is near and dear to a lot of our hearts. Ashley Galvin, yogi, inspirer, longtime friend of mine. Hello. It's so exciting to be here with you. Good to have you. Thank you for asking me. We've been on a long road, Ashley, and I didn't think we'd end up in a podcast studio together. I know. I thought that same thing driving in today. It was sort of, it was a really cool feeling knowing our our past and where we both come from, Aloe and myself and whatever, and now here we are. It's such a journey. <laughs> How many years ago did we meet? Like seven? Seven. I think seven it was around eight. 2015. When did you first hear from us? How did this start? I had, I don't know how long I had been living in LA. Not long. I had moved to LA. I was a hairstylist, moved to LA, long story short, going to try my hand at making it as a yoga teacher. I was still doing hair to make ends meet, teaching seven days a week, just driving all over, teaching any class I could, everyone I could. Um, And I was actually doing hair at my booth. And I got a DM on Instagram. And Instagram at that time, I didn't even want an Instagram. My sister made me get one. Anyway, I started posting my practice and my journey just authentically. And that's kind of how, it's kind of funny. That's kind of how like the whole manifestation thing started happening. But I got an, a DM saying, hey, would you like to come in? You know, we're Aloe Yoga. And would you like to come in and teach our headquarters a class at lunchtime? And I just thought, yes. Like, <laughs> okay. I know we had yoga. Yeah. yeah. At I the would, office. It was incredible. I, I was really surprised going in. The room was not very big. I think I had maybe 14 of you. And it was so intimate and beautiful because you had everyone from your height, the owner. We have Danny, the owner of Aloe, to maybe someone who runs the front desk and everywhere in between. All us students with zero ego, with zero agenda, just practicing yoga authentically. And that was really it for me right there. Um, It wasn't about the clothing or Instagram or anything else. I was like, that's a cool brand. Like, that's real. And to this day, I just taught a rooftop event on the Four Seasons. And one of the students afterwards said that to me. They said, like, wow, everyone at Aloe is so nice and they treat you like family and I was like yeah like even now that the brand is this big you know still that family it's really funny I feel like I'm in a time machine when you say that because that was a lot of years ago and I think about all the incredible work that the entire team put in to get to that point Mm -hmm. to have the idea of I don't know, bringing yoga to the world and mindfulness and movement and wellness and that that was a moment in time where you joined the journey and all the incredible work that everyone put in from that moment forward and that it really this whole adventure of aloe has really been about the people every day who showed up in every different capacity to um to to make where we are right now able to be totally and it's i love too that throughout the years and all of your growth and expansion it's it's remained the same like that family vibe and how much you care and how you as a brand and individually treat other people and you know what I mean like it you started as this family but it has that same little family feel even though it's huge you know what I mean we've gotten huger I know (laughs) thanks to you and everybody who's been part of it and uh, over those years as I've watched you actually I think you're a really talented, nice, inspiring person, but man, almost Thank more than you. anything, I'm always think Ashley is so strong. How are you so strong? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I am not naturally strong at all. I, when I first started, could not do side plank, Vashistasana with your knee down, right? Like a modified, my arm would be convulsing. I couldn't even do it. Half moon, I would literally fall out of the pose. The teacher had to hold me. I was so weak, but for some reason, I was just like, yoga is my thing. Um, And I was inspired. Anytime I would take a class and see people doing arm balances, I had no idea what it was, but I was inspired and not intimidated. And so I'm hoping that to do the same thing. Like, if I can do it, I can teach anyone to do it. You just have to put the 
hours on the mat. One of the things that we talked about over all the years of knowing you is how you've had to relearn your strength because Mm -hmm. at various times, like after you had your child, I know you had a surgery, I would see you and you'd say, I'm not strong right now, which is never true. But you would feel like you needed to recycle into your abilities. Yeah, I think it's good looking back at the time. Yeah, so maybe 10 years ago, I won't go into it, but I had this abdominal surgery. I was in the hospital for four days. I couldn't sit up by myself. I couldn't shower by myself. And I was, I think I was, yeah, I was teaching at that time and it was very, very humbling. And it was so hard mentally um, at the time, who I was as a practitioner at the time, because my physical practice was so important to me and it still is. But it, so I, yes, I had to relearn strength, but it also opened up all these other avenues and, and ways for me to be taught. And what I mean by that is like different avenues of yoga. Um, and then just as a teacher seeing this is how it is for someone as a beginner again, or like after I gave birth, practicing in a pregnant body, I got to practice and say, it was like a multitude of bodies, right? Because your body changes and this is how it is and after birth and on and on. And so there's no quick fix with with anything. We all want this magical answer. People will ask me on Instagram, how do I do this? How do I do that? There's not, not one thing I can tell you that will give you that. You have to um, practice with good teachers. Um, put the time in on your mat and, you know, like, that's it. <laughs> May, maybe practice up to a 10 minute plank. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, yes. Uh, will you tell yes. will you tell our friends who are listening about your adventure in a 10 minute plank? Yes. So recently I decided it wasn't that I just wanted to see how long I could do it. I decided I'm you know, I'm going to hold a 10 minute plank um, because if you practice with me on aloe moves, I say this maybe in every class and it's so true. And I always say you are so much stronger. Your body is so much stronger than you give it credit for. Because our mind wants to give up if we're in plank or chair, or anything that we're uncomfortable in, we feel discomfort and we want to stop. So that's why when I teach on Ella Moves, when I do core work, those of you who practice with me will know, I count down from 10 and I just keep counting and it's very random because I don't want you to know how many we're doing because you'll give up if you know. Anyway, so I said, okay, you're going to do a 10 minute plank. Uh, and I made a playlist and I put my headphones on and I, it's on my Instagram. I put a timer so everyone would know because I'm not going to cheat it. But I did that. If you had the timer and I was, say, staring at the timer saying, how long can I hold it? I would have felt, you know, the plank at, what, four or five minutes in and thought, that's good enough. But I'm like, you're doing it, Ash. And I did it. What did it feel <laughs> like? This is crazy <laughs> in the best way. Yeah, it felt really empowering. It wasn't as hard as I had as you would think. I mean, I'm sure there's a ton of people that can go way longer than 10 minutes and they're like, congratulations, honey. You know, (laughs) good job. But for me, especially knowing where I came from originally, you know, it's like, good job, Ash. And we've all followed you on that journey (laughs) of being stronger and less strong and recovering. And like, I think that's why we like to tune in to what you have going on you have so much authenticity and and what you do and we'll have some questions a little bit later from the allo community because they had a lot of things to ask you because they really care about what you're up to and it's it's so neat to to watch you in your journey and feel like I mean, there's a metaphor in so much of what you do, a metaphor in holding a plank for longer that's comfortable. It's about achievement and going places we didn't think we should, could go. Yeah, yeah. And we get to go there with you and it lifts us up. It ignites us in our lives to be able nice. to go places we didn't think we could go. Yeah. Um, that's honestly why I do it. It's like just to inspire you in your life, whatever that looks like. It might not be a 10 minute plank, but if it's like something you're avoiding or scared of, why? Like, just got to believe in yourself, you know? So, Ashley, I've always <laughs> wanted to go on one of your retreats yeah. and if you will indulge us, will you start talking through like, take us on a mini retreat right now. Will you talk about what yes. happens when one starts? <laughs> uh, I love, love teaching retreats for so many reasons, so many reasons. But the the biggest reason is the community and the connection. And I think that's something that 
globally we have been missing especially in recent events with everyone having to isolate and we don't shake hands or hug or I mean up until how recently we couldn't even take a yoga class together and we're so isolated and something about a retreat is boom it's that community and it's this group of people and it's different every time obviously based on the people but it's the same group for five to seven days all day long and one of the first things I try to do so say you're on my retreat this is the first morning we're all gonna form a circle and I just like to go around and have everyone say their name maybe share something but I like to point out like okay you're from this area of the world and you're from over here and you would have never had this opportunity to meet if it was outside of this experience and so and this is something that anyone can do in any situation use this time we're always so distracted we're on our phones we have these to-do lists but use the opportunity to connect and to and to share not just the good but share your your hardships your weaknesses and like just get real with one another you know I think it's really we do yoga too we do yoga too and you (laughs) usually get a really good tan and you're in paradise and those things all help but I think that's a great takeaway to make connection a priority and something that we can do when we're getting coffee in the morning when we show up at the office whatever it is in your uber like how like do you are you on your phone or do you say hey how's your day or you know I noticed you doing that as your friend <laughs> and it's something definitely to live up to is yeah. to connect um, maybe you got some of that ability you know when you do hair you're so close to people mm-hmm. that you have developed some of those skills about people being with people being close to them mm-hmm. from that time and that was a long time ago yeah but I know I think I, I like how our experiences in life early ladder into what we're doing now and we yeah. just can braid them together into something that we totally. are today yeah I co- totally agree and I think too there's something so special yeah doing here definitely taught me a lot just about the way in which you connect with someone and talk to someone and I would say from my experience that the majority we're all the same people pretty much we all want the same thing we all want love and connection we want to be heard but sadly we have these walls up that are really just ego and fear of not being accepted but when you can get someone to break that down that's when the connection is instant because we are the same so while we can't go on a yoga retreat with you we do have a really neat new series from you that's kind of like going on a yoga retreat with you on Allo moves our um, movement and mindfulness platform called complete body yoga i love it i love i get to practice with you in person sometimes and it's really neat to have you with me anytime Mm. all the time when you have a new series the community on alan moves gets so excited (laughs) when there's some new ashley galvin out maybe tell us a little bit about what was behind what you created for sure i Aloe Moves is, I honestly feel like it's my child. (laughs) It's like my baby. It's so close to me. And it's really cool because I have so many series and classes. And going back, it sort of, I'll remember like a time in my life or how I created each one. And this one, Complete Body Yoga, is really special because I planned it. I wrote all of these classes for you after just leading a yoga retreat. So I feel like I was very much inspired. I'm inspired. As a teacher, I'm inspired by my students. I don't know if that makes sense. But teaching is a whole second side to my practice. Um, So yeah, I just felt very inspired with new movements and um, excited to film and teach it. So it's eight classes, four full length, because I know everyone's asks for the full length yoga flows. And then four that are maybe 20 or 30 minutes. And I'm trying to cover complete body. So flexibility, strength, balance, and then stamina or endurance. So it's kind of the full spectrum. So cool. So it is like being on a retreat with you. Yeah. And we, well, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this. You can take it out if I'm not. But I'm going on and we're filming another in November retreat series for Ella moves <laughs> that's amazing you can say that um, I'm really looking forward to it so Ashley when you're not on a retreat or teaching a retreat what's your regular routine like 
it changes slightly day to day, but for the most part, I wake up about 6.30, get a coffee in, get my smoothie in. Um, and then tr really I try to do movement in the morning or early afternoon first. Um, it's different for everyone, but for me, that's the easiest because I physically have more energy. Um, but then I know that things come up and if you wait too long and something comes up, it's so easy to miss that. And to me, I always encourage you guys to move daily, right? Like whether it's, I always say this, five minutes or 50 minutes, whatever. But it's so much about just keeping that momentum. And I think when you are feeding your body good things and when you are giving back to yourself like in a real self-care way, because self-care gets thrown around a lot, right? How are you really caring for yourself? <laughs> um, but it inspires you and you kind of get on this track and you're feeling great about yourself that you are taking care of yourself. And when I move, whether it's yoga or lifting weights or running, it honestly, this sounds so cheesy, but it honestly trickles into every other part of my day. It goes into how I'm a mother. It goes into the the work that I do for Allo Moves and how, if it inspires me and on and on and on. So it's really huge for me. Every day I don't necessarily have time for an hour, two hour yoga class or workout, but um, sometimes if it's a busy, busy day, I will just hold a plank or get down on my mat, bust out core work. You can always fit in something. Um, yeah, I'm just rambling, that's that. <laughs> when you, so when you have five minutes, you'll go to core. Yeah, so if I have, because um, that's a real thing. I mean, lives are busy, and and but you do have time for something. And I think the biggest tip that I could give you guys as far as keeping that move daily attitude is to let go of this idea that it has to be a full practice or you have to do, because that can feel overwhelming. Maybe you're just not feeling good or lazy or whatever. So like drop the, it has to be this big, heavy thing and say two minutes, two minutes even. Go do core for two minutes straight. That's longer than you think when you're doing it, you know? Or um, if I'm short on time, I'll pick one muscle group and I'll go to exhaustion. So I'll go as many reps as I can with good form, and good form until burnout. It's the fastest way to gain strength in the shortest amount of time. Ashley, what do you eat in a day? everything. <laughs> I I could talk about this for so long and I'll try not to. I would like to start by saying, and then I'll tell you what to eat. I, I truly believe that each and every one of us needs something a little bit different. I don't believe in one size fits all. I don't believe in there's a perfect way to eat. I took, uh, and I won't go deep into this, but I took three years of my life and I wanted to see how does my body feel specifically on these different ways of eating, right? Uh, vegetarian or no alcohol, no processed food, vegan, raw vegan, sugar-free, like you name it, I tried it. And I tried to do each one for six months so that I would know, okay, what do I really need? Am I listening to someone tell me to drink this green juice? How does it actually make me feel? So when I say I eat everything, that's the truth. I really eat everything. But the most important thing is to listen to your body. So do I have a burger sometimes? Yeah. Do I have it every day? Of course not. I would feel really gross. Um, and I think it's as simple as that. So I eat, I'm really big on um, smoothies and I put a ton of greens into my smoothies. So that's usually my breakfast. I have a coffee in the morning first. Then I definitely do a smoothie with greens, with protein. The smoothie changes uh, ingredient wise, depending on the day. I love a kale salad actually, which is, doesn't sound exciting, but it's one of my favorite things. I love for breakfast, hard boiled eggs. Um, I love pasta. I'm off of pasta right now only because I was in Italy and like, I please don't feed me pasta again for the rest of my life. But usually I'm a big pasta eater. But overall, I would say lean protein and heavy, heavy greens. Greens and lean meat protein for me. That's what I feel best on. Um, once in a while, I get into on a sugar kick, but usually not so much. So we asked the Allo community if they had any questions for you, and they had so many questions oh, for let's you. Hear it. 
three, four, five. About I think we have about five okay. that we're going to do today. Okay. How do you stay calm in the midst of chaos or stress? That's really good. Um, my breath, honestly, um, is the number one. The number one thing you can do is take a deep breath. Um, and just, I honestly <laughs> tell my daughter that all the time. Deep breath in. And it switches her mood in an instant. Um, and I think just remembering that everything in life is cyclical, right? You're going to be up. You're going to be down. But just remembering that it's all, it's about that balance and not allowing yourself to project, but to stay in the present moment. Because when we project, what if, what if, what if? We build all these things up that literally don't exist. It's the biggest waste of time. But it's so easy to do and we all do it. So I think just taking that deep breath and whatever it is you're stressed about, um, just trying to stay present and, okay, what's worrying me? What can I do right now, right now to, to help that? And if I can't help it, you know, trust. Okay, next question. Beginners, how should beginners start with yoga. I love it, love it, love it. I'm asked this a lot. Don't overthink it. Just start. You don't need anything at all. You just need to get on not even a mat, maybe a mat, maybe your floor. Aloe moves is great if you are too afraid to go into a yoga studio because it's intimidating. I get it. It's hard to be a beginner. It's hard to suck at something. Um, by the way, if you're a beginner, it doesn't mean you suck. I feel bad saying that. I should take that back. But you know what I'm saying. Start Starting something new is very intimidating. Um, but it's the you'll never regret it. Um, so yeah, just start. Take a class. And if you don't like it, take a ton more. Take different styles of yoga. Take multiple teachers, whether it's on the app or in studio, um, and just see what works for you. I love that. You know, how often do we ever feel even the same after we've moved, let alone worse after we've moved? Never. Even when we don't know what we're doing. Yeah. Even a, I don't want to say a bad class, but no matter what, I have never regretted taking a class. You're going to learn something about yourself. You're going to learn something. As a teacher, even, I can learn something from every single class I take. What are some of the greatest benefits that yoga has brought you that you think oh, it brings other people? It has literally changed my life in every single way. I would say one of the first things I started noticing um, was my physical pain went away. I was a hairstylist, like I said, and I had a lot of tension and stress in my shoulders and neck. And so just simply put, it was it gone. Um, and then I started becoming a lot calmer with a lot more patience. I used to be very impatient. Um, but yeah, I think more than anything, yoga, yes, it's going to get you strong. It's going to get you flexible. Those are the givens, right? If you keep doing it, this will happen. But what it does to your mind, that's, the, that's it right there. That's the magic. I think the difference with yoga and any other type of fitness, and listen, I love fitness, but yoga it's like it clears out the noise, right? It clears out your own voice saying, I can't, or how you were raised with these ideas or everything else that clutters our brain. And it like gives you just this clarity that I can't even describe. And if you're a yoga practitioner, you'll know after one of these magical classes when you're just like, yes, I get it. And it's like, you're connecting back with you. And it's so empowering and inspiring. And it's like, that's what I think. <laughs> I think that's cool. And we love following that journey with you. You taught a class at Allo. How did we get from there to here where we yes. get to do really neat things with you, like take yoga on the roof of the Four Seasons I helipad? I know. I love that you asked that because going back, however many years ago this was, <laughs> to my yoga journey when I was just hustling and teaching everywhere I could, I sort of unknowingly began to manifest this in my life without even knowing that that's what I was trying to do. And it was, I would drive past Equinox every day on my way home and just think, I'm going to teach there. Because at the time that was like, you're, you've made it as a yoga teacher if you're teaching at Equinox. I'm going to teach there. I'm going to teach there. They reached out to me from Instagram. Why don't you teach for us? Come in, you know? Um, Aloe reached out to me. 
And after I taught with them, and I told you the story, how I taught the class, and how you, you as a family, not the brand of clothing, is what hooked me. And your message and what, where you were going, like you were here, but you knew we're going here. And not a lot of people have that. And I feel like I have that. Like in my head, I know I can do anything. It's just me holding myself back or my own stupid self-doubt or whatever. So you as a brand had that. And I just was like, yeah, like I'm going to work with them. Like we're going to, I'm going to be a part of this family, you know? And and yeah, and I feel like it, that's just sort of how everything came about. Like you, your message, bringing yoga to the world and change the world through yoga and have everyone experience that is a lot of why I teach. Yoga changed my life entirely. And every class I teach, I'm trying to create the experience that I had for you, right? Like it changed my life and I want it to change yours. And so anyway, I just felt really aligned with Aloe. Uh, and our visions and it just went well right (laughs) I mean I can so relate to that because when I came into the aloe community um, I there's already a group of people there who were working really hard to bring the benefits of yoga and breathing and all the good things to the world and I was attracted to the same thing that they were doing and so I know what you're talking about and I like to think that people come into the brand as um as fans of aloe and into the community because they're looking for that in their own life but they also want to amplify that in the world beyond their own life and I think it's a shared experience for many of us yeah I love that so you hung with us because you liked us? Because I thought it was just because we had cute yoga pants. Oh, you have the cutest yoga pants. Um, yeah, the fact that I that I like you as a family is such an added benefit. I would, I would wear your pants regardless. They're the cutest. They're not just the cutest. They have the highest uh, quality, which is very key because no one wants to be in a yoga class and have their leggings slip down or have to mess with their sports bra or whatever and have you distracted from what you're doing. So your function has always been there. Highest quality, highest quality material. I wash and put mine in the dryer every time. I don't have to hang dry. Like little things like that when you're as active as I am make a huge difference. But on top of that, I feel like your quality has been top notch the whole time but you just keep getting better. Like every season it's cuter and cuter. I don't know if even I want to say this, but I literally have a room in my house just for my aloe yoga clothes. It's an aloe closet in my house and it's, it's literally all I wear. That's amazing. (laughs) You know, I want to clarify that when you say you, you means uh, this, these incredible teams of people who do technical fit on bodies who are the most inspired designers oh, who yeah. are our production team who make sure that the fabrics are just insanely technically engineered and I, listen I, I'm just always so impressed by what they do that I want it to be like really clear that I'm talking about this because there's so much admiration for what all these teams of people yeah. do and um, I'm always blown away by the incredible detail and the incredible um execution of their efforts and when you say you it does not include me at all because I don't work on that side. So. I know. I know. I'm sorry. No, and I don't mean to just brush over it and say mm-hmm. it's so cute because there's so much that goes into it. I don't even know. I know some of it, but I'm sure I know not even the half of it. But yeah, just, we wear test you in wear the office. T- yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I know. I remember learning that and I love that you do that. It's not just here it is and it's falling apart tomorrow because that's never happened. I have I have, I still have, and I still wear my aloe yoga clothing from 2015, and it literally looks the same. And it's kind of bad because sometimes I'll wear it and people will want it, and I'll be like, sorry, this is <laughs> from the archive. That's so cool. I yeah. mean, they are genius magician alchemists, I and I, they, they are the backbone of what we do here. So yeah. it's but really it's, neat. It's nice to, not to get too much into this or body image or whatever, but as a woman, it's really nice to go to a yoga class and to honestly feel good and not you're not doing cat cow and thinking who's behind me or who because listen, we we're, we're all we all do that, right? We're all so focused on ourselves and we're so worried and we have these egos or we're whatever. So it's nice to feel like 
I'm covered. My pants aren't see-through. Or, you know what I mean? It's good. For sure. It's good. I know we all think everyone's looking, but no one's looking. No one's looking. You're all worried about yourself. It's true. I do it too, though. What is one thing that you want people to know about you that they might not? Oh, wow. Um, I'm super fun. I'm really funny and I'm a really good time. <laughs> um, I don't take much seriously. That's not true. I take work very seriously, but I feel like I'm pretty lighthearted. And I think some people are surprised when they meet me and see that side of my personality because online it is very work focused. Um, and I take yoga very seriously. But yeah, I'm pretty, I'm, I'm pretty chilled out. I think you're fun. Thanks. <laughs> How much yoga do you do? A lot. I do a lot. I have a, a whole space in my house of a room that I've turned into a yoga room. I mean, it's it's funny to think of that when people say, how, how long do you practice each day or what does it look like? Because it's so who I am that I don't even think about it. Like, oh, I'm going to go take a yoga class or I just do it. So I do a lot of yoga. What are your goals in your practice right now? Um, that's a really good question. That has definitely changed over the years. When I first started, it was very much, you know, um, focused on learning how to press to handstand or nailing certain arm balances and um, very strength driven. And obviously, over the course of your life and what you're going through, that changes. So right now, good question, Allison. Hmm. Well, to be honest, usually my practice consists of and is inspired by what I'm going to be creating for Alan Moves next. And I am creating a series now that's going to be coming up and I can't tell you about it, but it's it's um, it's inspired by that. <laughs> so I think maybe more balanced, a little more well-rounded. I have a tendency to, I'm really hard on myself. And I expect a lot out of myself. And it's easy for me to push, push, push. I mean, look, I just said I made myself do a 10-minute plank. Like, you're crazy, you know? Um, so I think for me, it's like a, easing back is harder. So having a more well-rounded practice is what I'm in search of. I love that. It's a different way to be strong is to be strong in how you are with yourself. Yeah. Maybe not in the press to handstand way. No. Which yeah. you, you nailed all of that. And maybe you <laughs> looked and thought when you were there, there's more. Well, and also it doesn't matter. You know, it matters in that I had a goal and I achieved it. And cool, that's empowering. But whether you can handstand or not makes zero difference in your life. I hate to say it. Um, I had a teacher tell me this once and I love it because it's so true as far as flexibility goes, like we're all searching for the same feeling in a stretch. Some of us just travel further to get it, right? And I thought, hmm, oh, so true. It's so true. Yeah. And I want to circle back to what you said earlier, okay. which is that we're all stronger than we think. Yes. In a lot of different ways. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of different ways. Physically, yes, you're stronger than you think. You're like, have you ever collapsed in a pose? Probably not. You need to believe in yourself more. Give yourself more credit, you know? Fallen over, yes. Collapsed. <laughs> Fallen over all the time. <laughs> like every time. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you, Ashley. It's been amazing having you here. You mm -hmm. are a light in the Allo world to um, to everyone in the community. And it's just so special being on this journey with you and being in this podcast studio yeah. with you. And I cannot wait to see what you do next for Allo Moves and in life. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's such an honor to be a guest and on this side of things. So and thank you for doing this podcast for everyone, by the way. Much needed. It's going to be really cool. That's sweet of you to say. Also, you're really fun. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>